I don't know if you guys are aware, but in the early 90s, they made this really, really small film called Terminator 2 Judgment Day. You guys fans? All right, all right. So we can make a little more noise than that in a second, guys, because we have Edward Furlong and Danny Cooksey. Make some noise. You guys having a good time? Or? Nice. Hello. So, oh, you get right. some more slack? Oh, I'm, I'm stepping on the, uh, okay, there, we there go. you go. Get some more slack there. Okay. So, we'll start at the beginning if we could. Um, if my research is correct, you guys were part of one of the biggest open calls for child casting in film history. Um, can you walk us through the experience of how this film came into your lives? You want to go? Uh, yeah, mine's really quick. I, it's uh, I, it was like an, an audition, and then um, they then they said like, hey, it's <laughs> you got the part. Come was, on down and work. Was that was it one audition? It, it, yeah, because I think well, like one or two maybe, and really? then and then it was just sort of there. Wow. Yeah. Holy crap. So, yeah. It was awesome. Wow. That's like that the easiest really audition quick. story I've yeah, ever heard. Yeah. I mean, like, it was just you know, I was uh, I. Did a lot of auditions. So. I've never heard anyone have that easy of a time not getting a job, not <laughs> booking a job. Like I went back seven times, and then they told me to, you know. Uh, Eddie. Yeah, I. Uh, story's way better. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So I don't. I. You know, what, it's weird. I've never had a grasp of a, really how big the casting call was because um, I wasn't really an actor. You know what I mean? So. Um, Later, I found out that pretty much like every young actor at that time went up for that role. Um, but uh, yeah, I was just sitting in a, at a boys club in Pasadena, and uh, Mally Finn, the casting director, uh, you know, came up and asked me if I wanted to try out for a movie, and um, went and uh, did a lot of auditions, man. I mean, yeah, it, was, it, was, it, it wasn't that easy. But, um, uh, yeah, and it was just kind of one of those things, man. I mean, it started off as, like, maybe a shot in the dark, you know? I didn't know if, you know, it was, I mean, yeah. Like, you know, even as a kid, you're just like, this is never going to happen. And uh, the more and more it just went along, I started taking it much more seriously. And, um, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. So, and then, I, and then there you go, man. It's, well, you know, the, rest, the, the rest is history. Yeah. Um, so... James Cameron, you know, kind of has a reputation of occasionally losing his cool on set. Did you guys ever drive him nuts as, as young kids trying to, when he's trying to make the film? No. No, we're, we're no, no. angels. Yeah. <laughs> Absolute, as you can see. Yeah. <laughs> Clearly. Yeah. No, he was, he was really, really, I mean, I, I, he was really nice to both of us. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that's good awesome. to hear. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's good to hear. I guess he didn't staple your cell phones to a two by four. This was 91. We didn't yeah, have cell phones. Yeah, yeah, phones. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There was no, yeah. All right. Yeah, it's, uh, they had cell, well, they, no, they had, uh, yeah, they had, they were, yeah, like, they were huge. Big. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I guess huge. you would, yeah, you would need yeah. a bigger staple gun. Um, so, you know, part of the reason kids like me thought you two were like the coolest friggin' dudes alive um, was, you know, the fact that that dirt bike was a lot cooler than my Schwinn. Um, so do you guys remember anything about working with the dirt bikes? And uh, was there a lot of training that went into that for both you guys? Or I was riding bitch, so I had no training no whatsoever. Training right? Yeah, they just no were like, get on, the, get on the bike. <laughs> like, yeah. if we lose Eddie, the movie's shut down. Like, we can get... <laughs> get on the back of the bike. Eddie's learning how to Dang, ride it. Uh, drive it. If but it's imagine. okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I hadn't seen him in a while, and he's like, yeah, yeah, I remember we were driving on the bike, and it was really, really, you know, kind of freaky, because you didn't really know how to ride that bike, and uh, I was sitting on the back of it. See, I thought I was doing great. But, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm going like, oh, shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Actually, they, I remember they were doing all those scenes in the wash, and I guess it was super slick, and even the, like, stunt people were dropping yeah, because it was one like one shot where we. Went yeah, we did that. get one one shot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we funny. didn't fall or anything, did we? No, no. no, no there was no falling. God. Yeah. That's too funny. So um, another key ingredient to the coolness of your characters and the film itself is, of course, the Guns N' Roses song "You Could Be Mine." Um, were you guys aware that that was um, what was going to be coming out of the boombox while you were filming? Or and do you guys get to see GNR live anytime you want now? <laughs> like, like no. hey, we, we pushed your song. Like, yeah, no, let no. Us in. That's 
That would be nice. Yeah. Actually, I, I remember um, I got a, I, get, I was given a cassette tape with, uh, I want to be sedated by the Ramones yeah. and, and uh, higher ground by the Chili Peppers. And then at some point they were like, all right, here's another cassette. Uh, we're going to use this uh, Guns N' Roses song. I was like 16 at the time, and I remember being like, I'm pretty much the shit. I have a copy oh, of the, of the yeah. Guns N' Roses song before it comes out. Oh, my yeah. God. Wow. It's been incredible. And it was apparently it was Arnold that kind of suggested the song, right? Do you guys ever hear that story? I, I hear that it was like Arnold handpicked that song. that They, they, they zeroed it on Guns N' Roses at one point, and he was like, this is the song. But, oh, nice. It was a good call. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it was a very good call. Um, so another um, thing I want to ask about, um, one person who contributed a lot to the film, and I find sometimes that it seems like they don't get enough credit, um, is the VFX artist uh, Dennis Murin. So was he on set a lot, and, and how did they explain to you like, all the work he was going to do? When you guys are young kids, no one had ever really seen CGI before, what did they tell you guys? Like, oh yeah, we're going to do this stuff in a computer, and it's going to morph, and... Uh, they, you know, um, well... You know, when we were doing it, and I'd never done a movie at all, so I had no idea, you know, I, you know, what it was, what it was. I do remember, like, reading it, and the way it described it was like, it was like liquid mercury and all this shit. Yeah. And I was like, how are they going to do this? And then you see it, and it's like, you know, you got little, like, you know, you know tape X's and styrofoam I mean I don't know not not styrofoam I mean it was like whatever the fuck that was you know what I mean and then uh, and it's just like I just and I remember asking Jim like how are you gonna make him like morph like what does that even mean and then he just explained it to me and I'm like okay this is too technical I don't I don't know what you're talking about and uh, yeah I mean um, yeah they were on to something I mean yeah that was like the first CGI I mean I think he did right the abyss yeah. Right. Before that, and I think he was explaining. Uh, yeah, he was explaining to me. He was like, "Oh yeah, we're gonna do something like you know that was in the abyss with the, uh, the thing." And uh, I mean, I just couldn't put my head around it. I mean, it was really hard to put your head around yeah. that script, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. Because I mean, there was a lot of practical effects then, but like, yeah, it was. T I mean, like how I don't even know. Yeah, it was like this oh, one makes it's it so morph great. into the ground and come out like it's like. It's yeah. like sort of like visual and then CG. It's like it had a great mix of everything. Yeah. That was, you know, like organic stuff. I mean, it was just, we did a, uh, we were in Burbank and there was a, there was a panel with some of the, the visual effects guys that were on the panel. Oh. And it was like, why are they talking to us? Talk to these guys. Like, they did, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, this is where it, it all happens. It was awesome. And yeah. it's amazing, you know, that a lot of the CGI in T2 still looks amazing today. Like, I see new stuff and it just looks so crappy. It looks so tacky. It looks too shiny. It looks this, that. You know, you look at the reflections and, you know, the shadows and things. It's like, how are they able to nail that on, like, a, you know, low, you know, low-powered Mac by today's standards? You, you know? know what, dude, like, I hope one day they go back to more of the practical and using CGI when they need it. Yes. You know what I mean? Because, yeah, totally. like, you know, I was like, you watch movies like Alien and shit like that, or yeah. shit, and it's like you see the. Mo I don't know. It just feels more authentic to oh, me, man. at least. You know, yeah. it's like, yeah, yeah. Especially Cameron's Aliens. That is, oh man, Fuck, the Queen. Dude. Oh, that yeah. Queen is like, forget about it. Yeah. Um, so, forget about it. Forget about yeah, it. Yeah. Um, right. We're in Jersey. Yeah. yeah, we're in Jersey. I apologize. Yeah. <laughs> um, you're, in the, you're in God's country now. Mm. Um, so what was the, the vibe between yourselves and Robert Patrick like on set? Did he like keep his distance from you guys to try and keep, a little bit, keep you guys a little scared of him? Or was he like warm, friendly guy in between takes? No, I mean, he was, he was nice. He was, um, yeah. I yeah. Mean, uh, he, I mean, we've done some 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 of these panels. Yeah, like he's, he he was in. He it as like he was like you know kind of keeping his distance. I remember him being like just a being super nice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Really? Um, wow. Yeah, I mean, like you know, I definitely. Yeah, you know, God, he was so brilliant. He was. In that he was role, such a man. badass. I, I mean, I, I think about it, and it's just, I remember looking, you know, back at him shooting, and I'm like, whoa, who is this weird guy with big ears? Like, you know, like, <laughs> you know, like, I mean, he's like, walking around like a grasshopper. Yeah. I don't know, it's like yeah. weird. And then, and then, uh, he, uh, you know, man, I mean, dude, he was so fucking 
good. Yeah. yeah. Like, he really was. He really man. was. He's such a talented actor. You yeah. Know? So, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Very cool. Awesome. So one thing I've always loved about James Cameron films are his willingness to use uh, old school low budget techniques like front screen Wait a projection. You know what? I think. Hold on one second. I'm sorry to cut you no, off. No, no, by all means. So I remember the story. I don't know if it's. A, I remember hearing on set, and somebody should confirm this with Robert. But I remember like hearing a rumor or something that basically while they were shooting the scene where he like, you know, comes in in the bubble like and he's naked or whatever, literally he stood up in a train went right by, like, I guess they were shooting right by, like, a train track, and he was like, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, it's, yeah. it's kind of getting, sorry, just went off on that, that, that note, but, uh, that happened. yeah, yeah, I'm not, yeah, that must have happened, dude, yeah, yeah, so, so, anyway, move on, oh, my yeah, God. <laughs> yeah, so, um, you mentioned, you know, going back to practical effects and stuff, and one thing I love about Cameron's films is, you know, even on this movie, which, you know, was the dawn of CG, there's still, like, some old-school, low-budget techniques from his Roger Corman days, like front-screen projection, and he can make that stuff look better than anybody else. Yeah. So I was wondering if you guys had any memories of shooting any of that stuff or just of him being, like, a low-tech wizard in general. I definitely remember doing uh, the rear projection. Um, and there was, there was a lot of it. We were... Uh, a lot of stuff in the car. Um, a lot of the, uh, the the scene where we're getting chased by the semi. We're doing a lot of these rear projection, and I've never done that since. And I thought that was maybe like a normal way to do things, but um, and I think yes, it was a very old school. You know, when I see it, it's like in a lot of older movies, a very old school way to do it. So I'm kind of stoked, man. I mean, there's a lot of things, man, that you know, like when I got into the business everything seemed to change overnight, but T2 was like one of the last movies that, like I remember them cutting the movie on an Ari with film, you know? Wow. And it's like everything was just very old school, you know? And then you look back and you're like, oh man, like yeah, it was, it was really cool to just see them sit there, because they were on set all the time editing, and you see them in there just, you know, cutting it, you know, basically a scissors and, you know, putting it together, and wow. yeah, yeah, it's a trip. Wow, Check that's out. incredible. Yeah. That's incredible. Um, so, you talked about, you know, this movie being the last, you know, that you saw cut on film. For a lot of us, you know, it was kind of the first of a lot of things. Obviously, the first, like, CG movie. Um, but it was the last in the sense of we haven't seen a movie infect the pop culture uh, as much as Terminator 2 did since Terminator 2. Like, that summer, it was everywhere. Like, everywhere. I mean, kids had school folders with the T-800 on it, and there were action figures and toys for an R-rated action movie. Um, even today, when a movie makes, like, a billion dollars, like, you know, it doesn't seem to have that kind of lasting cultural impact. It doesn't seem to, like, dominate an entire summer. It's like, okay, how many more of these can we get out this summer? So, I mean, were you guys aware of just, like, the magnitude of that when, you were, when the movie came out? Like, holy crap, I've never seen any movie do this before. I mean, I guess so. It was, it was, I mean, it was such a huge production. It was, yeah. It was I mean, biggest, you know what I mean? production ever at that point, right? It was, it was you know, it was just, it was, it was amazing. Um, so it's like, you know, something like that. And then with, with uh, everybody that was a part of it was, you know, you, you kind of, I got a definitely sense it was, there was something special, you know? For sure. How was it not going to be? Yeah, right. With the assembled crew and yeah. personnel. True. Um, yeah, I mean, I knew Jim, you know, like, I already knew his movies. I knew Aliens. I knew, like, you know, Terminator before that. I knew that it was going to be big. Um, it's weird. I, I, I didn't know that it would have such a lasting freaking impact. I didn't know that, you know, today we would be sitting at our tables and kids that were our age when we made that movie would still be coming up to us, yeah. you know. Uh, just, you know, loving it. So that's awesome because, you know, now you kind of get to realize, oh, wow, you're part of a classic, you oh, know, absolutely. like something that's just going to go down in history. And that's, that's, that's tight, man. You don't get to say that much in this business. Hell yeah. I mean, so, yeah. I mean this movie yeah. is absolutely, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, So, yeah, I mean, this movie is such a classic. It didn't just change the way movies were made. It changed the way movies were named. 
Like, did that ever shock you in the 90s when you saw, like, oh, there's D2 now and B2 and C2 and, like, everything G3. Like, yeah, yeah, every movie you had that abbreviated, like, number naming scheme thing. That's why I never noticed that. Yeah, you never noticed that? No, no. Oh, yeah. my God. I was, like, I lived in Blockbuster Video as a kid and stuff. So I just, like, I just walk the, I just walk, you know, I'd get, like, the one movie my dad would let me rent and then just walk and critique every other cover, you know, like, D2. What yeah. are they thinking? <laughs> like, D2. <laughs> And then it's like a porn movie, right? <laughs> right? Yeah, ASS2. God, what is this? I don't yeah, know. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, I am being a little selfish with the time here, so I do want to give the audience a chance to get in, guys. Uh, any questions you guys have for the amazing cast here? Throw hands up there. Oh, we got one uh, right here, and then we'll, we'll go to... The... Right Just be a little loud. Yeah, there is a mic up there, too, yeah, as well. Just catching my breath to be louder, but okay, that's good. <laughs> All right, Eddie, did you get any chance at the time when the movie came out to play T2 video games? Because you're featured in every one of them. You can't play as yourself, but you're still, I mean, <laughs> yeah. you're still in the game, you know? Oh, dude, so I, I've always been, like, a huge fan of video games. Like, I mean, I, um, I grew up, dude, I mean, I got, dude, I, I mean, like, literally when I went to Japan, I was like, I want to meet Shigeru Miyamoto before anybody knew who that motherfucker was. But, yeah, dude. Um, but, like, yeah, dude, like, um, so I was stoked because they brought, brought me in. It was who was it, was Bally or something like that? They, they, they were doing the game. And um, yeah, they were just, you know, they did the, the motion capture kind of thing. And so I was stoked. So yeah, I really wish they gave me one of those, man. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I went to an arcade when it came out and I like got like $10 worth of quarters and went through the whole thing and yeah. How mob cool. did you get at that arcade? That must've like, you're there playing T2. Kids you must have just I don't think anybody you. even noticed. What? You know what I mean? Yeah, what? yeah, no. yeah. Oh my God. He had a fun, he had a, you had the funniest story. Yeah. He was he was talking about when we were doing the thing, and for whatever reason, what Eddie got stuck in the arcade seat playing Missile Command. Oh yeah. <laughs> and I I had like a legit like video game, and he was like, why do why do I have the crappy video game? Yeah, yeah. So I'm like the, I'm like at like the eight bit video game. This is sucks. Yeah. See, this shows the patience of Jim Cameron, <laughs> is because Jim had him playing Aliens, the video game, it was yeah. like the arcade game, and it's like this cool side scroll. It was like you know like uh, you know aliens popping out and shit. <laughs> And I'm just, you know, missile command. I'm like I get missile command. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like Jim. How come he gets the cool game? <laughs> Dude, no, it would be better if I'm playing this game. <laughs> and he's like, you know, I'm sure he's like, you know what? I'm the fucking director, man. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? That's it. No, no games for anybody. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but he, he was cool. He's like, he kept it. I don't know. He was very patient. He's like, yeah, yeah, no, no, no. Uh, I think this is better for the thing. I was like, wow. Yeah, I was telling him. I was like so embarrassed about that. I was like, <laughs> Jesus, man. I was having my first, uh, my first, um, you know, kind of freak out star fit Madonna episode. You know diva I mean? moment? Like, Your first diva uh, moment? My, my first diva moment. Moment. <laughs> Over Missile Command. I want, fuck, I want, yeah, I don't want fucking Missile Command. This sucks. I need more bits. <laughs> yeah, I need more bits. Yeah. And of course, I'm like, give him the shitty one. <laughs> like, damn it, I'm John Connor. John Connor doesn't fuck with Missile Command. But then, yeah, I didn't realize we were going to be playing, uh, what was it, I, uh, uh, Afterburner. Yeah, so see, then I got the, you, got, you got the good one for that one. You got the right end. So, yeah, yeah. Mm. <laughs> Oh, man. Yeah, yeah, I, I, so. I still can't believe you didn't get spotted out that, man. I used to cut my hair like John Connor in the 90s, and everyone noticed that. I couldn't go anywhere without somebody like, John Connor hair. I'm like, I'm trying, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, so we had another question up the front, brother. Uh, just wanted to say thank you for all, all the years of entertainment with the movie. Thank you for Budnick. So your shorts is amazing. So Thanks. I just wanted yeah. to say that. Um, What's your fondest memories on set? Do you have any funny Arnold stories? Any funny Linda Hamilton stories? I was super stoked. I, I got to be, I was just happened to be a fly on the wall on set the day that they launched the semi truck into the, that oh, they did wow. that big. That was really, that was super memorable just to watch something of that. Yeah, that's like funny. You know what I mean? It, it's yeah. like that you get one shot at something like that. So like the preparation for it and everything like that was, was pretty cool just to sort of witness something 
like that, yeah. Bad, bad. yeah. That was a pretty cool memory. Yeah, we, uh, yeah, just in L.A., in the middle of the valley, just witnessing a semi-truck, you know. Again, so practical effects, man. Oh, yeah. 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 But, uh, that yeah, whole yeah. sequence is perfection. You're, you know, I've watched it a thousand times. I'm still on the edge of my seat every time I watch that. The, the chase Same here. the truck going over and all that. You yeah. know, that was the first thing that I ever saw edited. Because, yeah. honestly, this is... See, again, I'm, I'm, an, I'm an idiot. I'm an asshole. But, I mean, I remember, like, because so much of it was so slow and you're taking I'd never done a movie. So, I'm like, I remember being like, Jim, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, man. Like, this is, wow, okay. You know, like, yeah. Guess and, you're the director. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then he pulled me. He's like, I want to show you something. And, and, and we, he took me into the editing room and he showed me the whole chase. Through the uh, through the mall in through the sewers, and they you know he got sound you know like had sound on it and shit. I had just like my jaw dropped. I was just like, holy shit, because that was like a long. And then I was like, oh man, this is gonna be badass. Like oh, you know yeah. what I mean? Like because it's it's like weird, you know, and your kid like yeah, we're like you know they they put handlebars on an apple box, and then you're like you know <laughs> yeah yeah, it's like, ah, and then like. The truck comes up, it doesn't do anything, you're like, ah, you know what I mean? But it was, <laughs> you know. There's a lot, you know, we were like in like school and it'd be like, you know, it'd get called out and it's like, okay, here's the thing. So you're going to go zip, zip, okay, you're done. You're done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 10 seconds of a motorcycle going through an alleyway, you know? Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like, you know, yeah, it's, it's fascinating, you know, when you're, and you see that being done for the very first time, it's just, it's, it's amazing. And it's, it's amazing that Jim had the eye throughout all of this. I mean, that's what it takes is like a really good director yeah. and somebody who can see the whole thing in their head while they're doing it. Um, oh, yeah. and it just do, never gets lost. I don't know. It's just crazy. It's, it's the trip. best chase scene in any movie. I oh, think. Oh, hands down. Yeah. Definitely. I definitely agree. Yeah. Um, oh, we had one up here. Thank you. Awesome. Uh, what can you tell us about your involvement in Terminator Dark Fate? If you uh, can tell us anything. Yeah. I can't say shit. <laughs> I, I had to ask. I had to ask. Uh, yes. Nothing. All right. All right. All right. Listen, you guys really want to know what happens in now, the whole thing? <laughs> Psych! Ooh. <laughs> thank you, thank you. You don't have to wait too much longer. Luckily, it's coming out soon. It's um, November 1st. It's a very, it's a little roll, man. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a little roll, but uh, yeah, I mean, you know, go check it out, dude. You know what I mean? You know, um, speaking of Terminator Dark Fate, I know Tim Miller, the director, was quoted recently as saying about Terminator that he thinks over the years since T2, the brand has become a little bit tainted and stuff like that. And I was curious what your thoughts are on the intervening years between then and now. Like, did you, you know, see the other movies? Did you ever watch the Sarah Connor Chronicles? Um, <laughs> You know, is there any, any, any things that you did enjoy? You know, I don't want to, you know, force you to, you know, put a bad quote out there, but is there anything that you, that you have enjoyed that they've done with Terminator since, since you, you guys have been involved? Yeah, you know, they're still talking about it to this day, so, you know, it's got, it's got quite the, uh, the legacy, I think. Yeah. Oh, for sure. You know? For sure. It's cool. Uh, yeah. You know what? It's always been a soft spot for me, and I'm glad to sort of reclaim the role, you know what I mean? Hell yes. Um, I, uh, but the, you know, it was my fault, you know, to be honest, I was kind of, uh, I, I was supposed to do the, you know, Terminator 3, um, but, uh, you know, kind of was parting a little too hard back in those days, you know, Where we all? and I just, I, when it came out, I was like, I can't, I, I didn't even want to see it, I, I didn't want to, like, you know, and, and I've kind of avoided it ever since, so, well, yeah, 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 but, you uh, know, I, I can't, I can't sit here and tell you that you're missing out on uh, an amazing, amazing entry in the franchise or anything like that, um, yeah, and, you know, no disrespect. Nick Stahl, though, man, I mean, he's, he's, he's a really, you know, I, I think, He's you know, really, he's a solid dude, man. I know yeah. him. I, I saw, know yeah, him. I saw you guys actually posted convention pictures recently together, which was blew my mind. I was like, two John Connors at the <laughs> same time? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. incredible. Yeah, and Kristana, Kristana Loken, man. She's beautiful. And, oh, you know, yeah. She's very talented. I've worked with her on a project. And, um, yeah, man, she's... I mean, so, I don't know. You know, no disrespect to Christian Bale either, but you're everyone's John Connor, man. Oh, like, you are everyone's favorite, right? Absolutely. Thank you. Oh, oh, 
Okay. Speaking of, I think there may be an award with someone's name on it on this stage here. If we have a moment, I'd like to invite Mr. Chris Waters up on stage, because he looks like he has something very cool in his hand. Chris? Oh, wait a minute. Oh, okay. Yeah, keep me waiting. Make me look bad, Chris. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, I have God. a feeling this is going to be pretty they epic. Those. Yeah, oh, man, dude, shit. So, oh, dude. Thank you so much. Yes. Very cool. Yeah, turn that around. Let the. Uh... Do some nasty things to this. Uh oh, do some nasty things. <laughs> All right. Here, give that a little spin around. Let the audience take a look oh, at yeah, it there. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry. I'm, 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 I'm solving for me now. Isn't uh, that dope? Hell yeah! All right. Amazing Chris Waters, everybody. He he made this. He made this. He, he I, I saw him walking by earlier. And he 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 made this. This is like yeah. Huh? Oh wow, man. Absolutely. That's There's like a hidden face on the back here, too. That's so you really? guys only saw the Terminators in L.A. That's what they look like in New Jersey. <laughs> yeah. East Coast resistance is a very different, very different battle. That or on acid, one or the other, man. Wow. You know? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. That's Sorry. <laughs> um, so yeah. we have uh, any, any more questions out there, guys? Any fans? Anything you want to know? Yeah, I've got one right here. Just so you know, I refuse to watch Terminator 3 because you were not John Connor. Oh, Sorry. Thank you. I don't care. So my question is, because you were in a film of this caliber, what happened to your social lives after that? Good question. Um, I, I guess I went from being a nerd to everyone thinking I'm cool, but still being a nerd. I don't know. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't know. So I guess that's the best way I could describe it. Yeah. yeah life just moved on. Yeah, I mean, life, life you know, and you were, went on you, to the next you, thing. And you were saying you were doing Salute Your Shorts at the same time, right? Yeah, yeah, I was doing, so there were, there were days that I would be either AM there and then like, you know, at lunchtime go to the other one and, and then, you know, or vice versa. And uh -huh. Yeah, you were shooting that yeah, at the same at time? at the same time. And I was making, at, then at nighttime, I was making the, a record. Oh my God! For Interscope, so yeah, I was I was busy. Back dude, then. I was yeah. I remember meeting you know meeting you on set, and I was like, dude, this. I mean, because he knew what he was. He was a professional already. He knew what he was doing, man. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Shows, so yeah. it, was it was pretty fun, impressive. Man. I was like, mm -hmm. yeah. Very cool. Now, so being that you had already started Salute Your Shorts, was the vibe with that cast different after T2 came out? Were they like, oh, like you know, roll the red carpet you know, now? I, I like, feel like that was the the sort of. I think that was the last little bit that we were doing. Really? From it, yeah, yeah. I feel like it was right. It was that. Like, it was like the tail end of it. Oh, so you never got to like flex in front of your salute your shorts cast? Yeah, mates, no, like, no, no, no. Yeah, no. I'm not. I'm five three. I'm not much of a flexer. Yeah, yeah. clearly I am too. You know, I'm <laughs> rippling, right? Yeah, we'll let Arnold do the flexing. <laughs> so we had uh, more questions out there, guys. We got one in the back. Okay, then we'll come back to the front. <laughs> Hi guys, how are you doing? How you doing? Doing good. 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 So my question is that um uh do you, um what what do you think of the um like like um real life scientists are thinking of creating artificial intelligence? Uh so uh, do you think that's a good idea or a bad idea? That's a good question. Yeah. I, and I, I knew you were going to, dressed in a clown, I knew he was going to get up and ask like a deep fucking question. <laughs> I just I <laughs> knew it. I knew it. Yeah. Saw that coming up Broadway. <laughs> yeah. The impending that's danger a, of artificial intelligence. Yeah, right? I don't know. For me, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm fascinated by it. Um, yeah, I, you know, I... I I mean, I don't think they've gotten the quantum computers or anything to do anything too nuts yet, right? But uh, that's fascinating. That's just fascinating. Um, it seems like we're well on the way. 
yeah, we're well on the way to something. And you know what? The fact of the matter is, is we are all way too curious to stop. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So, you know, either we're all going down or we're going to have like, you know, yeah. Yeah. you know, blowjobs recorded in our mind constantly just to recall. I don't know. Something. <laughs> something. Oh you know? God, like, you know. sorry, dude. I'm just, I, I have the worst sense of humor ever. <laughs> but, yeah. It's an R-rated film. We can have an R-rated panel. I think it's all right. Uh, no, but uh, yeah, man, I think it's, I, I don't know. It's, it's, it's fascinating, man. It's fascinating. I really do believe like science and all that is like on a new cusp. On a new like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, right yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think we're already there. I just saw someone complaining that they dropped food on the floor and the Roomba got to it faster than they could. And they're like, this is how it starts. This is how Skynet starts. We're going to fight over that French fry and it's going to cause World War III. Yeah. What did they have? Did you what, did you hear about that thing? Or was it like um, they had to turn off like the compu- the two computers talking somewhere? Was it at Facebook or something like that? And because they were like literally like went into a different language so they couldn't be heard or understood and humans couldn't understand them. Did you guys hear about that? Yeah. That's, that seems super sketchy. That's sketchy. Yeah, they, they went, they're like, they basically communicated to be like, all right, we need to talk about some private shit. <laughs> yeah. And then they, they had to turn them off, which is, that's crazy, dude. Dude, Miles Dyson is still out there hacking away. Oh, that's scary. Hey, dude, but it'd be kind of badass, right? It would be cool. I don't know. I, don't know if, I mean, if we're all going to go out, let's just go out with, together, man. If we all, you know, it'd be cool if we all get good guy Arnold Terminators to, like, ride dirt bikes with. and do Just get Arnold, know. man. He's still kicking. <laughs> Hell yeah, that's true. Yeah, he's, he's still terminating. Yeah, 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 so, man. Fucking okay, Good for him. All right, cool. Um, we had uh, another one, I believe it was, where was it? Here. Yes. Right on. Thanks, guys. You're great. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Thank You're you welcome. very much. Take care. Uh, something not about Terminator. Uh, Eddie, you work with many stars. How was it working with uh, Meryl Streep and Liam Neeson? Meryl Streep and Liam Neeson. Right. Wow. Um, that was amazing, man. Um, yeah, it, it was, you know, the, the, it's funny, dude. Like, not many people know that movie, but uh, yeah, I mean, I got to work with Meryl Streep and, uh, and Liam Neeson, man. Um, I'm mostly just because, I mean, uh, you know, um, I think Liam is a lot like I am, where we just kind of kind of just get into the scene while we're doing it, you know? But there is something about Meryl Streep, man, um, that I was blown away by, because it seems just crazy, because I remember just thinking, like, man, like, she can just be laughing, whatever, and then they say action. She can be crying her heart out and give like the most amazing performance like ever. And it's just, it's mind boggling. I'm just like, you know, you're psychotic or something, aren't you? And like, you shouldn't be able to do this, you know? Like, it's amazing, but she's so fucking talented. She, she just is so, I mean, she's one of the great actors of our time. I really do believe that, you know? Um, and, uh, it was great. You know what? I, I was a really big fan of one of her movies. It's called um, what is it called? It was like the one where she's like, where they, where it's, where they're like, I don't know, like go, like they die. You know what I mean? Death becomes. Death becomes. Oh, no, 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 not that, not that, not that. And it's like Mel Brooks or something, right? Or just oh, 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 is it Albert Brooks? Albert Brooks. Albert, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Defending your life. Defending your life. Yes, yes. Yeah, that's a great movie. Yes, yes, yes. I remember loving that movie, yeah. dude. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's a great, um, that's like a great cable movie. Yeah, yeah. It's just one of those movies, like, every time it was on, I would just watch it. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. They used the Universal Studios trams in that movie. Yeah. Right? Is, like, the Universal Studios trams. Shit. Anytime I see that in a movie, that takes me back. That's, like, yeah. such a nostalgic era, the Universal Studio tour stuff. Yeah. Um, we had, do we, was there one more up, up front? Right? Yeah, 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 absolutely, yeah. Uh, since you guys are big uh, child actor stars, were there any roles that uh, that you wanted but that you couldn't get or that you didn't get? Hmm. I remember auditioning for the uh, like uh, Vegas Vacation. Oh, okay. Right? Yeah. And it was weird because it that is uh, you know what was it like the late '80s or something? And I remember hearing back that they were like, "All right, they really like what you're doing, but." Uh, 
yeah, like, it's like TV people don't do... It was like, TV, you know, TV didn't do movies and movies didn't do TV. They gave you that riff? Oh, ah, I know. Wow. It's bullshit, right? You feel like them in TT. Yeah, right? it, it was, was really biggest, weird. That was funny. Yeah. I'm the yeah. biggest freaking movie ever made. It was, it was awesome. T2. Oh, my God. Yeah, wow. it's weird how it's changed. It's crazy, dude. Yeah. yeah that's, um, wow. Oh, my God. Are you kidding me? There's, like, so many <laughs> roles, man. Like, yeah. That's all we do is, like, go, you know, audition that's, and try to get yep. roles and... You know, honestly, you the most up and move on. stressful experience, I think, in acting is trying to get a job. I bet, yeah. Once you have the job, I think it's, it's a pretty nice gig. But uh, I think the whole, I hate the whole casting couch thing, man. You know? Uh, yeah. But, yeah. Do we have uh, other questions out there, guys? Yeah, cool. We're going. Cool. Um, so we talked about how big the, uh, so Terminator 2 was probably the most expensive movie ever made back then and coming out yes. in 91. Are you guys surprised all these years later of the impact that it still has on everyone? Um, there's, I mean, the, people still reference, you know, T2 to this day about anything. Again, like the Facebook thing, like everything is Skynet, everything is based on that film. And everyone kind of goes back to when they say, who, who's John Connor? It's Ed Furlong. <laughs> like, the, um, are you guys surprised by that at all? Yeah, we were just talking about that kind of. Yeah. yeah. I it's, mean, you know, it's just one, it's one of those movies it's, that just, uh, you know, it has a, it's sort of a life of its own. You know? Sure. Yeah. It's, it's like they pass along from one generation to the next. Yeah, I think this movie will be around till the end of time. Yeah. And it's actually an interesting thing I wanted to riff on because I remember when we were all waiting for the VHS to come out and it seemed to be like almost bigger than the theatrical release. It was like legendary, like kids like at school, like everyone was talking. I got physically sick at school, I think, so I could go home and watch T2 on tape. But like I literally actually became sick. I didn't like fake it. I was like, oh man, I want to go home and watch that tape so bad. Like I only got to watch 15 minutes of it last night. My dad made me go to sleep. I got sick. I puked. And then I got home and my mom was like, we're going to take you to the doctor. I'm like, no, no, no I feel better now because I just want to watch TV. And she's like, you fake it. And I'm like, I forgot that I'd actually puked at school. And I was like, she made me convinced I faked it. Like it was the Talk weirdest. about a lost time, man. Like yeah, when you right? get a DVD or a video oh and God. like, you know, there wasn't like Netflix and a billion other things out there, you know, to watch. Like it's insane. Yeah. It's crazy. But do you guys have any memory of that? Like building up to the VHS release, like how much it got a big push too. like even just it was everywhere on TV. You know, it was a huge, huge, um, v it was probably the biggest VHS release ever, I think. It must have been. I don't know That's if you funny. I don't, I don't remember. I, I did see it at a drive-in. That's, oh, that's wow. like a date myself back to when they had drive-ins. I saw it at a drive-in. Wow. I saw it at a drive-in. So it didn't have the impact at a drive-in that it would have, that it did have. In a regular Yeah, 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 it did. Oh, wow. <laughs> was it like the, yeah, you put it on and you know, the speakers in your car. Yeah, a little right? box hanging out the yeah, window. Yeah. And then, you know, another thing about T2 on home video I think is interesting is that whatever way they come out with to do home video, T2 is one of the first movies to come out on every format. Like, Laserdisc, T2, DVD, we're right there. Like, a couple, you know, many, many, many versions on DVD. They did, like, an HD VHS thing, in the, and T2 was one of the only movies that got released on it. Like, do you guys ever think about, like, man, whatever, they, whatever way they invent to watch movies, T2 is going to be the first one to the oh, party. Oh, of course. Yeah, they always do that. It's yeah. always like a... Uh... I guess, yeah. Uh, I mean, it seems to me like you always see it, like, you know, Best Buy or whatever, like, whenever the new thing comes out, it's like 4K, it'll be like one of the first oh, totally. kind of it, things there. It was, yeah. Yeah, like that and Jurassic Park and... Yeah, yeah there's yeah, a couple, like, you know, a couple yeah. other movies that are, you know, kind of yeah. distantly behind T2 in that regard. I, I really feel like th that is like the demo, you know, home video format movie. Like, well, let's see what T2 looks like this way, you know? <laughs> yeah. Like, we're going to invent 3D, 4K, upside down, you yeah. know, VR vision. They're going to put T2 out in that way. Hey, well, why not, man? <laughs> and, Ca and Cameron's going to, like, make it great. He'll be like, well, I'll handle the conversion process, and he'll make it phenomenal. Yeah, so. Jim was, yeah, Jim's been, like, uh, I remember... Uh, when the special edition came out. Right. You know, like... Uh, Which was very first... Not a lot of movies had that before, T2. Yeah, I think Aliens had one. Right. Right? And then, uh, yeah, I mean, I remember Jim was really actively involved in it, and he brought us in, and... Um, yeah. 
Speaking of the special editions, um, do you guys have any um, scenes that, you know, from the special editions or that were cut in general that, like, maybe your favorite, you know, scenes of the deleted scenes, something that you kind of hope would have been in the theatrical version? Um, I remember when we were doing the movie, we were, I was, I was, uh, they were, it was crazy because we finished, we finished in, uh, either really early June, I think they were gonna open up in July 4th, which is crazy, because they had like a month to finish up this after we finished shooting. Um, and, uh, but yeah, I remember being at Skywalk Ranch and I was, and, and we were uh, looping the film and uh, ADR. And then uh, Jim told me like, yeah, we're gonna have to cut the, um, the scene where you and Linda you know, are like, yeah, with the chip. The chip, yeah. And that was my audition scene. Whoa. So I was like, oh no, really? Like, you know, really? And he's like, yeah, we gotta cut it out for time. You know, but uh, yeah, I mean, but yeah, yeah. It happens, I guess, right? Yeah. Um, you know, I've always been partial to the alternate ending, too. I always thought, like, I don't know if I prefer it to the ending that the, the theatrical cut has, but, um, you know, where it's, like, in the future, and uh -huh. Linda Hamilton has, like, the old makeup on and stuff like that. Something about that ending that I just, I don't know, I kind of always had a soft spot for that. Did, do you remember how the, the, the change in endings came about? Was that something Jim ever talked to you guys about? No, no. Um... It seems, I guess, right? Like, what was the ending like? She it was the, like she was in an old, like a park or something. Yeah, she's like in a that. park, and they have the guy who you know played adult John Connor at the beginning of the movie, but now he's like a she, John fights a different battle now oh, in the Senate. Oh, they're playing on a on a yeah, on a, and, and he's playing with his kids. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Future looking um, playground. They probably know. did that so they could leave a sequel. You know, like kind of keep it open for a sequel. Yeah, or oh, something. that's yeah, probably yeah. that is probably what yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. kind of yeah. That's very true. Um, so one more before I let you guys go. I, I just have to ask about T2 3D Battle Across Time because again we we're talking about new formats and you know new ways to watch movies and stuff. I was wondering if you know Eddie any memories from shooting that and then Danny if you ever went to Universal and did no the, I never did you never, never saw did. the 3D no no experience. never saw the 3D experience. I yeah. still think that's the best 3D I've ever seen in my life is in that like and no disrespect to Avatar Jim you know I know you're watching <laughs> yeah but it, there's something about the the 3D in that was just incredible. Yeah, I remember when he freezes and like, yeah, I think like the spike or something comes like, oh, shit like just flies right out in your face. <laughs> flies right out in your face. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, that was cool, right? Yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah. Uh, always live like right off the 101 and you pass Universal all the time and you could see the building where the ride was. So I miss driving down the 101 being like, yeah, that's my ride. <laughs> you know, like, you know what I mean? Like, that always felt so good to do that. So, oh, yeah, that. now it's like, I don't know what the hell it is, like Rugrats or some shit. I don't, I don't know. know. They, they took out all the cool movie rides and replaced them all with, you know, whatever they replaced them with. Uh, certainly isn't going to live up to the, the Terminator legendary label. Um, but uh, anyway, guys, be sure to stop by Danny and Eddie's table for the last few hours we have. I know they have a lot more stories. Get some pictures, get some autographs, and give these guys another amazing round of applause. Thank you. This is John Glover, and you are watching Fandom Spotlight. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Lionel Luther recommends it. Ah, have some fun. Follow your fandom.